In this lesson, we are going to be talking about inflation. So what is inflation? Inflation is an increase in the prices of goods and services. And more accurately, it is the rate of increases of prices of goods and services over time. And usually that period of time is going to be one year. And an example of this is you might hear of your parents talking about how back in the day you could buy a set of groceries for, let's say, 10 rand, whereas now it might cost 50 rand or 100 rand to buy that same set of groceries. Or you can look at how the cost of education has increased over time. These are examples of price inflation. So how do we measure inflation? Well, to get an idea of how someone could measure inflation, let's start out with an example of a family of two. And let's say that in this two-person family, uh, we are trying to figure out how the prices of goods and services that they purchased changed over the period of one year. Well, this might seem like it's very straightforward to do if we're just talking about one family. So what we could do is we could figure out what this family spends their money on. So let's say in one year they spent money on food and that made up 30% of their budget. So 30% of their income went towards food. Then let's say housing, let's say that was 60% of their income that went towards housing. And then let's say there was entertainment, and entertainment was the remaining 10%. So of course this is very simplistic, probably not very accurate of what families usually spend their money on, but just for the sake of this example, we're going to say that these are the only three things that this family spent their money on, and this was the percentage breakdown of how their funds are allocated in each of these three categories. If we wanted to figure out how much money this family spent on these goods or services in that one year, we're basically going to have to take the weighted average of how much they spent on each of these categories, and that is going to be the total cost for these three types of items. So let's say the average price of food in that year was 5,000 rand. The average price of housing in that year was 14,100 rand. The price of entertainment was 400 rand for this year. So again, not very realistic, but let's just say that this was the case for this example. So if we were trying to come up with a price level for this basket of items in this year, what we could do is we could take 30% of that's 0 0.3 of our 5,000 plus 60% of our 14,100 plus 10% of our 400. And if we put this into a calculator, we are going to get an answer that is 10,000. So in this first year, the cost of this basket, the average cost of this basket was 10,000 rand. So this was year one. Now let's say in year two. In year two, we still spent 30% on food, still spent 60% on housing, and still spent 10% on entertainment. But now the cost of food went up from 5,000 to 5,500. The housing cost went up to 14,500. And the entertainment cost went up to 410 rand. So these percentages are still going to remain the same, but these prices have gone up slightly. So what is going to be the cost of this basket in year two? Well, we can do the same calculation that we did here, except we're going to put 5,500 in for here. We're going to put 14,500 in over here and we're gonna put 410 in over here. And if we do that, we are going to get 10,391. So from year one to year two, the cost of this same basket of goods has gone from 10,000 
to 10,391. So if we wanted to calculate that in terms of a percent change, the way that we can do that is we can take our second year cost, 10,391, minus our first year cost, which was 10,000, and divide that by our first year cost, which was 10,000. We do final minus initial over initial times 100. That is how you calculate a percent change. And if you put that into a calculator, you are going to get 3.91%. So the increase in prices in this case from year one to year two was 3.91%. And it turns out that the way that we measure inflation is somewhat similar to this. Inflation is going to be measured using something called consumer price index. Consumer price index or CPI as it is abbreviated. And this is how we are going to measure inflation. Now, this is not something that is going to be asked of you. It's not in the scope of your grade 10 studies but I find that it can be useful to understand the basics of how inflation is calculated so that you have a good understanding of what exactly it is and so that you're not dealing with some abstract concept when you're doing inflation problems. So if any of this sounds a bit confusing to you, you don't need to worry too much because you're not ever going to be asked directly in grade 10 about consumer price index or details on how inflation is calculated. You're more going to have to apply inflation to certain problems, and that is what we'll go over at the end of this video and in the next video. But basically, how inflation is measured is by the consumer price index. And what the consumer price index is, it is a weighted average of prices of a basket of goods and services. So this basket of goods and services is going to be determined based on what the average person in a country is going to be buying. So this is not going to be relating to a single family or a single person. It is a basket of goods that is determined by the government in most cases. And they treat this basket of goods as the general purchases that are made by the average consumer in a country. So the average family is going to spend their money on this basket of goods and services. And they are going to give each item a weight in that basket. So for example, they will do plenty of surveys and get information from many different people and figure out that on average, people are going to be spending, let's say 60% of their income on housing or 10% on entertainment. They are going to take this based on a large number of people and come up with an average, an average basket of goods and services. And on average, how much people are going to spend on those different categories. So it's a weighted average of prices of this basket of goods and services. And what they do is they are going to measure not based on actual prices like we had done. What they're going to do is they are going to measure based on price levels. And the price level is going to be something in a base year. So they're going to compare the price level of those goods and services in a base year to the current year that you are looking at. And they're going to measure the change between the base level and the current level. So let's say in the base year, the price level is set at 100. And then in the year that they're looking at, the price level is 120. That means that in that period of time, there was a 20% increase. And that is how they are going to measure inflation. It is going to be based on those changes in price levels. And this is not going to be as straightforward as just looking at the changes in the actual prices. They're going to factor in uh, changes in quality of items. For example, if you were trying to compare the cost of computers in the 90s versus now, there are going to be many factors that need to be involved in that calculation because it's not just about 
the change in average prices of the item. You also have to take into account the fact that computers are more powerful and that the quality of a lot of these items has gotten better. So that is all going to be factored in to these changes in price levels. So a lot of different factors actually go into this and it can become quite complicated. But if you want to look at it simplistically, you can just think of it as them calculating the changes in price level of this predetermined basket of goods and services that they are attributing to the average family. That is, in a nutshell, how inflation is measured. And it is usually going to be given as a percentage, and that is generally a percentage per annum. So one might say that the inflation rate was 3% per annum. That is something that you might see in a question. And the question might be asking to determine what the change in prices is going to be if the inflation rate was 3% per annum and you might have the initial cost of the item and you have to figure out how much it's going to be after a certain number of years if that was your given inflation rate. So it's generally going to be given to you in a percentage. And the way that you are going to answer these questions is going to be to use the compound interest formula. So you might recall that the compound interest formula was that A, which is the accumulated amount, is going to be equal to P times 1 plus I to the power of N. This was our compound interest formula. This is the formula that you are going to use to calculate questions that are involving inflation. And the reason that you're going to be using compound interest is because inflation is going to build year upon year. So as inflation occurs in one year, in the second year, the further increase is going to build up on the previous year and it's going to continue to build year after year. So that is why you're going to use the compound interest formula as opposed to the simple interest formula. So when you're dealing with inflation in grade 10, you are mainly just going to be dealing with it as an application of your compound interest formula. And in the next lesson, we'll go over a few different examples of using the compound interest formula in questions related to inflation.